Well, thank you for just a moment to speak to you this afternoon. And it's 75 degree day in January. Uh, it's certainly a beautiful day in South Carolina, but when you have over a thousand people on the lawn, it's probably a good time to quote Nikki Haley and say, this is a great day in South Carolina. Thank you all for being here. Lisa gave me what may be uh, the arg arguably the easiest job today, which is to link the economic and the social issues. But by putting me on the docket after Larry Groom, she made my job substantially harder. Uh, we want to say thank you, Larry, for what you've done in the legislature, and, and God bless you. Thank you for everything. What Senator Groom said there is critical, that if you don't get the issue of life right, you're not going to get it right anywhere else. A week from Monday, we will mark Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We celebrate his life and his struggle for equality for all Americans. And in his letter from a Birmingham jail, he wrote that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And that means when you deny the rights of some Americans, you undermine the rights of all Americans. On the issue of life, we have denied for 40 years since 1973, 40 years this month, the right to life and personhood to nearly 57 million American citizens. And there are some who would say that those who pushed for the undermining of the rights of personhood for some have not been affected by it themselves. But I would humbly submit to you that this nation is $16 trillion in debt trending towards $18 trillion in debt, we're running a $1.3 trillion annual deficit. And yes, we have a debt crisis, but it was brought on by a death crisis. Because economists on the right and the left have told us that if we had between 14 and 16 million more Americans in our workforce, we could bankroll Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Now we can debate the constitutionality of those programs at another time, and indeed we probably should. But the reality is we do not have enough people paying into those programs to keep them solvent. And if we had 14 to 16 million more Americans in the workforce, we wouldn't have a $16 trillion national debt because the driver of that debt over 50% of our federal budget now goes to those three programs. In the next 20 years, it'll go to 100% of the federal budget. We took the lives of 57 million Americans since 1973. Interestingly enough, if you look at those who we have aborted, who would be in the workforce now of age to work, it is about 16 million people. So Martin Luther King Jr. was right. Injustice anywhere is indeed a threat to justice everywhere because 40 years ago those that advocated to undermine the right of life for millions of Americans are now in many cases among the most aged and indeed fragile of our society. And the culture of death that many helped to create is now sadly, sickeningly, and sickeningly ironically being visited upon them because the pressure under these new health care plans is to ration health care. So indeed, undermining life for those beginning life is undermining life now for those ending the end of their life. And we must stand up, ladies and gentlemen, every one of us, to rebuild our economy. And you rebuild our economy by rebuilding a culture of life. We take care of life, everything else will follow suit because as Lisa is so fine to quote, and I've quoted, it's kind of hard to have liberty in the pursuit of happiness if you don't have life. And so now we've talked about this impact of abortion on our economy, now I'm going to pass something that looks sort of like a chicken bucket, and I'd ask the clergy, anyone who's ordained, if you're a minister, pastor, deacon, we need you to please come forward and help us pass the chicken buckets. 
and abortion has had an awful impact on our economy. But now let's reverse it. Now let's let our economy have an undermining impact on abortion and let's stand up for life so we can rebuild a culture of life and a free economy for all Americans. God bless you all. God bless South Carolina and may God have mercy on the United States of America.